Happy 2023, everyone. Welcome back to the Tahanamak podcast. Back for another very exciting year of football, hopefully. And uh, it's your host, Nathaniel, and I'm joined by Matt and Ant for this episode covering the festive period where we've had uh, three matches and a fair bit of chance venues to discuss as well. So, Matt and Ant, how are we today? <coughs> um, Brilliant. Um, very good, very good. Good, delightful. Well, we're proudly sponsored by yeah, Six Yards yeah. Out and Pearson Spa. And uh, as I said, we've had uh, seven points from nine over the last three games. A game against Blackpool and then two away games at Birmingham and Wigan. So uh, it's been a very long time since we've had back-to-back wins to discuss. Um, but the last time that happened, that was Rotherham and Blackpool as well. So uh, it's good to have, you know, some wins to talk about and uh, unbeaten and five under the senior. So... First thing to discuss, really, um, because I remember the last episode, we were a little bit unsure and we weren't fully convinced about Rossini turning it around. But I think, you know, two wins later and some very good performances should be uh, a positive year to look forward to. So, uh, Matt, you know, Rossini, has he turned it around? Look, I've been I've been very surprised, but I've been very happy, man. Um, The. The two games on the bounce away from home have been excellent. Um, I think the game itself against Birmingham, um, we seem to be um, on top and thankfully we got the goal. Um, Brilliant stuff. And then the Wigan game, um, dominant from minute one. Rocky spell in the second half. Obviously, they got their goal um, 63 minutes in it was. But if I felt that if there was going to be another goal in the game, it was going to go to City. Um, I think with Rossini, in terms of him turning it round, I think that, you know, we're questioning the way he plays. Um, we've been looking at sort of him implementing this style of passing out from the back and, and um, sort of punishing teams from there. I think that against sort of, the better teams in the league, I think that there needs a certain bit of quality. And that's something I think that we still lack. And when we've been given the task to prove it, we haven't really. Um, you could argue that the Watford game was maybe an exception to that, but they've not been very good for, of, as of late. But against the lesser teams, I think that we've looked, we've looked really good. There's been passages of play that have been excellent. So if we can continue to play the way that we did against Birmingham, particularly against Wigan, against the sort of better sides in this league, then I'm all Mm -hmm. for it. It's just when it comes to those um, higher quality teams, that's where we prove ourselves. But overall, with Rossini and the way we're playing, I like the way he talks in interviews. I like the way we played in our last two games. I didn't like Blackpool. um, But yeah, overall, seven points in nine is very, very positive for Liam Rossini and all City. Mm Mm-hmm. Would you agree with that, Ant? Because I think um, hindsight's a wonderful thing after the, well, during the first half against Cardiff and then after the disappointing draw against well, Sunderland and Blackpool, I was thinking maybe it's not the right way to go, especially because we conceded um, a goal playing out from the back against Blackpool. But we are controlling games a lot more. And um, of course, early in the season under Schotter, um, we didn't have much possession. So, you know, I think it's working well. Would you agree with that, Ant? Um, I do. I think you've got to look at things like, so you've got to look at how we were before, obviously, um, Rosinia came in and how much of a mess this team was, how unorganised, how chaotic they were, how we just literally would roll over and, and, and be beaten two or three nil near enough every game. It was, it, the, 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 there didn't seem to be a way that we could fix it. And all the questions were when Rosinia came in is, is what does he have to do? What's his first job? What's he got to do when he comes in? And it was, to stop conceding so many goals, make yourselves hard to beat. Yes, we've probably drawn a lot of games since Rosie's taken over, but that is showing that we've become hard to beat. We're, we're staying in games, we're getting points, we're not losing games. And yes, people are going to be moaned sometimes. I mean, playing out from the back is always a marmite with any club you're at. You'll probably find Man City fans that probably don't like it. Uh, maybe a bad example because maybe the amount of Premier League titles here when they maybe are doing yeah. it. But, um, but with us, it's, it's, it is risk and reward. And you've got to remember that it is still his, he's inherited Schotter's team. So he's trying to incorporate his style with somebody else's players. So, you know, kudos to him. He's brought Macker in. You know, Figs really didn't sort, uh, didn't fit the the playing out from the back system. So we we brought Macker in. He made the the bold decision of putting Greavesy as a, a left back, uh, obviously to try and deal with the set pieces. But he's 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 tending to like the next Dan Burn. He was amazing going down that left back side. Um, but it, it, 
you're slowly seeing these tactical decisions from Rosinia. Do you know, like where you're thinking, you know, he's, he's quite new to management. Has he got the tactical noose? You know, are we going to have to be on a learning curve with him? But I think in the last few games, especially, um, definitely against Wigan, because they came out all guns blazing in the second half and he, he tweaked a couple of things, <clears throat> went more direct and it, and it paid off. You know, we're, we're seeing these proactive decisions that are, are, are reaping the benefits. And like we say, we've only lost once since he's took over. So uh, we've played some decent teams in that spell. So, you know, we've got the transfer window now, bring some more of his players in, see where we can go. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's the consistency and that solidity that he's brought under Schotter. We were conceding so many goals a game. We didn't have the ball. Um, and I think, of course, uh, Seri um, was criticised in the you know, the press recently and, and has been that, you know, maybe he's overplayed. Does he get stuck in a lot more? But the recent games under the senior where we've got the ball, that's allowing him to thrive. He's not being relied on as much to be a defensive player and he's, he's controlled the games. He was rightly the man of the match against... Blackpool and maybe was he voted Birmingham as well? Or he's one of the best players. So um that solidity and um defensively was so much better. We don't actually have the worst defence in the league anymore, which has not been the case for a long time. So um and it's uh, three clean sheets in eight, um, one defeat in eight. So, you know, um even if he doesn't have a very good uh you know, next few games, he's still, you know, been a massive improvement on Shotter and also Carried on and definitely improved of what Dawson did, which was improve us a little bit. But uh, well, what? considering we only had one clean sheet before we came, before Rosinia came in, yeah, and he's already tripled that in the in the games he's been in. Shows <laughs> the, the difference he's made. And I think it's probably good to point out that you uh, you just see Cyrus Christie's in, interview where he was saying that under Shotter he, he he wasn't fully aware of what he was meant to be doing and didn't really understand his role. And I and I imagine every other player in the squad would say the same thing because you could <laughs> tell by the way we were playing, whereas now we look very, very organised. Every player knows exactly where they're meant to be, what they're doing, and you can tell what he's doing on the training ground works. It's brilliant to see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, I think Doherty said something similar, and I think a lot of players have said that, and uh, yeah, you can tell. Um, and he, the senior is sort of a bit dismissive of how a lot of other clubs play, that um, he goes to other uh, clubs and watches them play around the country, and he says a lot of them, you couldn't tell what they're, philosophy was but mm. clearly ours is a, a possession game play out from the back be you know in control and I mean I think actually comparing it to Man City um of course not the consistency and the quality yet but uh Guardiola and the way he sets his teams up especially you know with that amount of possession is you know or and a lot of managers say it, the team with the fewest mistakes wins and that's why we didn't win against Blackpool we made a massive error but when we don't make an error um you know, if we've got the ball and we're controlling the game, we're not going to be under pressure making as many mistakes. So I think that's how you get that consistent uh, level of quality. And there can't be many other teams in the, the five games since the World Cup that have gone unbeaten um, in the EFL or, or League One or, uh, or the Championship. I haven't looked it up, but it must be a fair few. So um, one major thing we did talk about after the Sunderland game, after his missed penalty, was Oscar Estepinian. And we were discussing how to get the best out of him. And um, I think we were discussing that, Matt. He's then scored three goals in three games. So how how great is it to have that player at the front of the pitch performing well again? Honestly, like I, my point that I made, there was a back end of the last episode that was specifically about City and we talked about it being a must-win game. Um, and I didn't talk about it just as the three points. I talked about particularly Oscar getting a goal fact that he's back in the goals, maybe he's one of them strikers that, you know, has a really rich vein of form, scores sort of six, seven goals and then goes off for a little bit. Look, mm. if he does that three times a season, he's on 20 odd goals. You can't yeah. ask, you can't ask for much more in the championship. That's, that's just what we need. Um, absolutely chuff for him. You know, the goals, the goal he has, he, he's scored. Um, I think the, the Wigan goal was, was a, he was in the right place. He was making the right run. It was a scuff finish, but he went in and I was happy with that. I think that, you know, one of Rossini's biggest challenges, you made the point, Ant, there is Schotter's team that he's inherited, but he's still got to do a job and get the most out of them players. Like, are we going to go and make a Liam Rossini team in January? No. Mm. We're, but we, we are going to make a couple of signings that he would maybe like in his team. But are we going to revamp the entire squad? No, we're not. So it's up to Rossini to get the most out of these players. And to see Oscar firing again is another sign of what Rossini is doing and instilling that confidence, not just um, from the back in terms of our 
defensive form, but also up front as well. And to get four goals as well is is big for for this club. We've I don't think it's mm. you know one of the first time I think we scored three against Blackpool. I can't think of another game we scored more than three. Well, I think the last time times, scored four was Preston last season. The first match that might be right. Potentially, yeah, because it was the first game of the season. We were top of the shot, weren't we? So there's little bits like that where you just think to yourself, I've said it many a times, I just want a game where we we, lo- we win 4-0 or 4-1. Um, of course, Rotherham, yeah, 4-2. But I think it's, I mean, that was a that was a game where mm. we had, um, yeah, they were, they were they were a pretty poor side. I watched the guy, I was there at the game and that they were, they were poor. We should have won that um, by 10. Um, but have, again, yeah. it's just... I'm so in, I'm so happy for Oscar. It's great for the club. It's great. It's great for Rossinha because he knows he can rely on somebody to score goals. And long may it continue. Um, really, really happy. And uh, fingers crossed, as I say, that going forward that he continues to score for City. I mean, clearly Liam or, or Oscar or someone at the club watched our last episode and thought they really need to start getting the best out of him. But uh, I mean, he, he's got an incredible record. Really, it's a goal every two games. And in this division, this is the first time he's played in England. Um, you know, he's taken to a, a doctor water. It was a shame he, he has been out of form since that brilliant start. But that's three and three. And hopefully, uh, you know, this year he can, uh, you know, still be one of the top goal scorers because he's still, I think he's second or third joint top scorer, which is amazing. And we still don't even really give him a huge amount of, of service. But we just need that sort of player at the top of the pitch in those tight games against Birmingham. He scored the, you know, what could have been the winning goal against Wigan. Um, having someone in form like that is is all the more important. Um, so it's one of the only two negative things I think we're going to be talking about on this podcast is uh, the home form. Of course, it was a draw against Blackpool, not a disaster. But how do we turn this home form around? Because you'd think having all the ball would, would help, but at home, I mean, maybe we just haven't got that bit of luck and Huddersfield's the next one in the league. That's a big chance to... To break that duck, but and uh, it's one win in ten. Is it at home? Mm. Are you are you worried about that, or do you think we'll be able to change that in the next game? I am because we've got. Is it? It's either the worst or the second worst home record in the league. And w- when you look where we are in the yeah. division, like we've got the second. I think we're second in the form table for away at the minute. And yeah. mm-hmm. it, it's you know, if we'd have even been semi competent at home, you know, like yeah. mid table ish, we'd be in the yeah. top six or the top ten Would at least. Be. Um, it's it's very frustrating because I I went to the game where we drew one one as well, uh, two game with ten men and the other team, but I I, I can't genuinely sit here and say how we change it or why we support at home. It's it's literally just a mentality thing. I think because if you remember last season, do you remember when we were um we had a similar thing last season where we were really good away. And we just couldn't get a win at home. And then, do you remember when Shotter made us play in the away kit against Cardiff? Yes. I think it was, and, and we won that game. Mm-hmm. And then, we, then we we actually finished like unbeaten at home for the last five or six games or something. <clears throat> to me, it's just all in the red. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I think they're getting there. They change the room before a game, and they're thinking, "Oh God, we're at home again." And they're already they're, they're they're anxious. They're they're they lose that extra 20 percent that they might have away. I mean, some people maybe say that you know at home we're a bit more of a, a a whingy fan base and the, we moan more when we're playing out from the back mm. and stuff. But I, I don't think stuff like that affects the players um, in, in a great way. And if it does, they shouldn't really be professional footballers. But away from home, the, the, the atmosphere is just so much more positive. Um, obviously, I think it suits us playing away. Uh, we like teams to, we, we absorb the pressure and try and hit them on the break and it, and it does well. But it, it's just going to take that bit of luck. I think once we win that home game, mm-hmm. um, it'll change, hopefully. Um it but Get in there, isn't it? It's just getting there. It's the problem. It's very frustrating because it, we are just chalk and cheese at the minute, aren't we? And, and I think it was telling when Rosini said after the Blackpool game, he was like, "I'm quite glad we've got a couple of away games." Like, mm. so he's even aware that there's there's a mentality issue when we're at the MKM, and, and we've just got to solve it because if, as soon as we solve that, we're a top ten team. Do you know what I mean? This 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 the way we're playing at the minute and, and the quality of players we've got, we shouldn't be anywhere near the bottom three uh, and hopefully we're now just starting to climb back to where we need to be so the home form is the key to getting back to there and we've got to sort it out yeah. I mean uh, Gabriel Sutton's asked reckon you could sneak into the playoffs well I think it's the home form you've answered it there away we're, we're eight I think we're eighth in the away table 
just need to yeah, be average at home. So see, the problem with the league this around, season, the, the, the league this season is just so close that any team from fifth to like twenty first is realistically in with a shout of the top six because you know you look at look at Middlesbrough, look at West Brom. They were they were you know way in the bottom three. They're in below us, and now they're Middlesbrough are what fifth, fourth, something like that. West Brom are just outside. It, mm-hmm. it all it takes is two or three good results in a row and your season's completely flipped but yeah. it's also vice versa you could be in the top six lose two or three and you're near the bottom three Birmingham could have gone fifth a couple of weeks ago and now they're below us so mm. it's, it's such a yeah. strange league this season that you've just it, it, I think whoever's going to be the most consistent will sneak in there but there's just so many teams in the round then it, January will probably be a big month because you've got the likes of uh, Coventry that might struggle to hold on to like Jokeres uh, you've got um uh, who else it might be going? Ross Stewart at Sunderland. You know they might struggle to keep hold of him, kind of thing. So you've got teams that 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 need to keep hold of the key players to, to stay in and amongst that mix. And I think when you when you compare us to teams around us, I think we're in a really strong position for the transfer window. I don't think we need to um, or want to sell any of our key players. Like we're not in a position. Like our owner is going to turn around. Someone could say, um, you know, what's our best opinions availability? Get knotted. Because they don't, they, they want to get promotion. No. We've got that ambition now. We're not a selling club, you know. Whereas a lamb would be like, well, you know, stick a couple of mil onto this price tag you've given me, and you can have him. Adjin's yeah. wanting the Premier League. You know, Tan was doing an interview with BBC Radio Humberside um, before Wigan talking about the transfers and stuff, saying um, we, we need to be in the top six. That's their aim. That's where they want to be. And it, it, like I say, it's just consistency. Everyone's beating everyone this season. It's such a weird league, man. Really, really weird league. Mm. Yeah, I mean, always is, you know, any of the EFL leagues are, are strange and, and, and tight, but this year it's, uh, it, it is much tighter than it was last season. I had a little look and can't remember the specifics, but it is a very close league. And, you know, we've just talked about our consistency of results. Hopefully that's what Rossini has implemented. So, I mean, fingers crossed that will be us for 2023. Um, let's get the other negative thing out of the way Um before we move on to the positives and the chance for news. Um, I mean, we don't know if he's going to be out for a longer time. Well, I suppose three negative things because Baxter's out for three months. But the other thing was Aliar, he came back, um, you know, came off the bench against Blackpool, started against Birmingham and then against Wigan. But then just on the stroke of half time against Wigan, he uh, went down with a hamstring again. So hopefully he isn't out for as long as the first time because he'd just come back. So, uh, you know, Matt, was it good to see Aliar back and you concerned um, about him being out again? It was good to see him back. I think it'll take him quite a few games to get back to his best. I think that he's shown it in pockets, but he's not... I'm not, I'm not sure if he's provided an, an assist or, or a goal yet since he's come back. And obviously now he's injured. I think that it's a shame. I was, I was slightly confused as to why he started him I can understand you know coming on and then thinking he's ready I just felt with a layoff of such a long time I felt that he could have started him on the bench and it's, it's always the way with these injuries because you know you're always going to get criticized you know oh he came on in the last game he'll be fine but then you don't play him why have you not played him and then a situation like this where he does play he gets injured and he's there I'm just hoping as you quite rightly say that it's not we don't know and therefore, it's not as bad as we thought. I think because he got injured and then he did carry on, and then he they, they was he was taken off precaution in, uh, mm-hmm. as a precaution, right? So there's that. On Baxter, I just the thing is, people say, "Oh, he's a massive miss." I I really like, I like Baxter as a, as a as a goalkeeper, as a as specifically a shot stopping goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. I think he's a good lad. Like the. the Thing of him drinking beer last year was great. He gets on with the fans well, yeah. and that's cool. Will he, will he, will him leaving this team make a massive difference? No, in my opinion. Um, I think him and Ingram are fairly similar in that they're not mm-hmm. good enough with the feet, and we need a new goalkeeper. Doesn't need to be January. Yeah. I personally think so. Considering now Baxter's left, I think we need a new new keeper to have three at least that are fit. Because I think we'll just go back to Chelsea now. Um, so I I'm of the I'm of the mindset that like he was he was great for us sort of last season, um, and I, but I think this style of football that Liam wants to play doesn't suit the way that Baxter is as a goalkeeper, and therefore when you talk about a miss, you know I wish him all the best with his career and and with his um, 
with his injury and I hope it's not sort of like gonna deter him from getting a getting a move elsewhere or or whatever he decides to do. But for City, I've just not I don't feel as though he's a massive miss. And for Sayad Manesh, we've not seen enough of him to even think he's a massive miss, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. I just want to see see him back fitting well. But if the players are, are, are scoring goals uh, without him on the pitch um and yeah we can see from a corner which is bad but if the players are scoring goals and we're creating things um and he has to take a bit more time out then look i don't think either of them are the end of the world in my opinion yeah i mean we've said it so many times that ingram and baxter are both very good shot stoppers um i mean he hasn't made a mistake for two games ingram playing out from the back uh i mean whether that blackball one was his fault i don't really know but yes. uh, a, a, a playing out from the back goalkeeper would would probably be, um, you know, we'll get onto the chance of uh, gossip again soon, but I think that's probably a, a decent shout. And then, of course, 4 1 win against Wigan. Uh, Tyler Smith came off the bench uh, after Aliar came off, um, scored two goals. And there's talk that he might actually be able to go out on loan in January. But, uh, I mean, he scored two goals. Um, he's got three this season. And that's his best for us in a season. And, uh, you know, I think he's got a good attitude. His interviews are good and, uh, you know, he's still a very good young player. I think it would be a shame to see him go out on loan after a good performance against Wigan. So, um, and how impressed were you with Tyler Smith's impact? Because he did exactly what Senior would have wanted of him. Yeah, um, I mean, there was, there was because I didn't realise that Sinek went on the bench. So when we're all in mm. stands talking about who we bring on in that, um, the the quite a, the group around me were actually quite annoyed that Tyler Smith was the one that came on and and uh, oh, I was. I see the thing is with Tyler Smith is I think since we've signed him it's been obvious that there's a player there and we just don't we won't be able to give him the game time that he needs to reach his potential. Now you see if you'd have gone back to before the World Cup break. Tyler Smith was a player that I was I was saying that needs to go out on loan in January to a League One mm-hmm. club or to a League Two club where he can play regularly and score goals. Uh, obviously now it's a bit different because we've got what um, you know he's he's hit a bit of form and like we say he's just come off the bench to score a brace. But it's you know he, he might not score again for another month or so. Do you know what I mean? Whereas he could mm-hmm. go to a League One club who's who's you know maybe try and try and find a top half team that's you know pushing the playoffs or promotion and uh, get his confidence up, get him to you know sort of round his game a bit more, play as a first team striker every week and um and hopefully reach his potential. I mean he's it's one of those if he stays, he stays. He's he's obviously played his it trained his way into the side, Anti Rosini has said mm-hmm. how impressed he is with his attitude, his application in training, um how he comes on and uh you know off the bench to, to change games. That's obviously what he's looking for from his subs. Um and if you know if he's earned his right to stay here at the, the club then fair play. It's just I think it's going to be a bit matter of time in that They'd obviously already cracked on a co- with a couple of transfer deals before the Wigan game, and it, it might just be a case of well, we've already sorted it, kind of thing. So, um, you know, either way, um, he's he, he probably going to get a bit of game time uh, if he stays, uh, more game time if he goes out on loan. Mm-hmm. Still, a really a win win for for us in tip, but um, it's just who, who do you sign to replace him, kind of thing. And we're struggling with our wingers at the minute, aren't we? Like, Alia can't stay fit at the minute. Tete, we haven't seen for a while. And mm-hmm. Vale can't get minutes. And Cynics, you know, not really involved oh, he's anymore. Out. He's probably going. So, it's, you know, it's it, if, if he can... Because he's been playing in that right wing position, hasn't he, as well? So, he's showing that he's got a bit more about him than um, just playing through the middle. So, mm-hmm. uh, <sighs> yeah, I'd be happy either way with Tyler Smith. Um, it, just, it just depends who we bring in to replace him, obviously. I think for me with Tyler, he's somebody that if he was, if he was somebody that the managers, that Rosina, of course, and Shotter wanted in the squad, they'd have him in the squad and they'd have him playing. And he hasn't played. I think that, you know, if if you could, if you if you judged the whole city on the last two games, then we'd be top of the league and talk about the Premier League. But it's not about that. Like anybody can hit a good vein of four. Um, and score a few goals. I think the difference between, like, I made the point earlier about Oscar. I think that, you know, Oscar's scored goals in the top division in Portugal. He's he's represented his country. And again, he's he's scoring goals for us now, which is great. I think with Tyler, like, I really like him because he's a Sheffield lad. Like, obviously, like, sort of South Yorkshire, I'm from West Yorkshire. And, you know, I love just like the way he talks. <laughs> um, uh, but I think that for, for, for me, like, I wish him all, I would wish him all the best if he goes away. But the more important thing is we can't sign players because we've got too many players in the squad. 
Like we we can't. So we have to get rid of players to bring players in. It's hmm. like our squad already. You look at who we've actually got on our books. Like you, sometimes when I look at the city bench, I think to myself, "Oh, we've hardly got anyone playing." But they're all injured, so you actually can't have as you can't just pick, have as many players as you want in a squad just because they're injured. Like they have to be there. So he is going to have to go in order for other signs to come in and actually make a difference for us. Now, I'm of the impression and the opinion that I would like to see him go out on loan to a League One club, score a few goals. If he comes, if he scores a hatful there, he can become a good good squad player for us next season. If mm-hmm. he doesn't, good good wishes. But you know, I think it'd be it'd be wrong of me to say that you know we always want a new a new player um, to come in and to excite the fans in January. And I think that with Tyler Smith, I'm I'm happy for him to go to allow somebody else to come in. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point you make about the squad because I think we've got is it 25 you're allowed to have and there are a few players who actually aren't in the squad who I think like Tete will obviously come back when he's fit so um, getting players out is certainly a must. Um, one thing before we do go on to all of the transfer gossip and, and the sort of things we need to do and which players might leave um, which have been mentioned, uh, Greaves scored again and we all said that uh, once he got his first goal um, which a lot of people bet on, I know, um, that he'd become a bit of a goal machine, hopefully, because he's had a lot of chances to score the last few years. But he's got three goals. He's our third top goal scorer, joint with um, Smith and maybe someone else, which is quite surprising. But, you know, he's getting into the positions, so good on him. And uh, he's he's taken to, a, you know, um, being left back has been really good for him. And he's a, a very good attacking player as well. Um, and, of course, probably a better defensive player than Fleming would be. So, you know, that's another good thing that I think Dawson started and him scoring goals is, is very helpful. And uh, I guess one other or the little thing, um, I did get the assist for the for that Greaves goal, but I think uh, I looked back at it and it was a pretty, it would pretty have been a terrible, penalty, yeah, I, think. Mm, I think a pretty rubbish dive from him. <laughs> I don't think yeah, there was any honestly. contact he'd throw himself. That was that was beautifully crafted from Elliot. He absolutely yeah. went for it. It was like he was jumping off a Titanic. The blessing, it, like, it, was. it was. It was a real. It was a real swan dive, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. But I, I just want to pick up on the point about Greaves. Like, I'm. I've been so impressed with him going to left back because I. I was. Uh, I don't want to be negative, but when he kept coming forward with the ball, people kept going, "Oh, he's great coming forward. He's great going forward." I just felt he looked a bit awkward coming forward, hmm. and. I don't know if it was just the way that Schotter was kind of saying to him, oh, yeah, come forward the ball. And he was just like, OK, I will do. And that's how we want to play. But, you know, I've been proven wrong. Because some when, when when he's on the ball on that left-hand side, I think particularly against Wigan, like playing in like a sort of left wing-back role and being up there mm. alongside, well, Allier and then Tyler Smith, like, it was good. Good link-up play, bursting forward, good pace. Um, there was a moment where I couldn't actually believe how fast he was going. Like yeah. I think he was. I think he just got set, released by Seri. He was just gunning for it. What the hell, Jacob? Fair play. I, I I brought a mate with me uh, to the Wigan game, and he's not a City fan. He's just he just likes mm. football. He goes he goes and watches all different clubs and stuff. Mm. He came with me, and 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 um, I said to him when when Greaves he was playing because it, it was like his sixth time in the first half that he'd made like a a barnstorming run down the left, and he'd taken on like two players, got beyond them, and then played a really nice pass in behind. And he and he he turned to me and he went. Is he a centre half? I went, yeah. <laughs> he went, what? He went, honestly. He was like, I asked, I had to ask that question just because of how tall he was. But if he were a bit smaller, I'd have just assumed he was a natural fullback. And I think he's looked better since Rosini's. Well, maybe Dawson and Rosini because obviously they were both fullbacks, but they mm-hmm. know how to play the fullback role. So they'll they'll yeah. give him that extra mm-hmm. bit of, of knowledge into you know where you need to be, what you can do, kind of thing. But like you say, yeah, for a big guy, he's good on the ball, he's fast. Um, I think his strength helps him as well because mm-hmm. he can tap a ball past an opponent, and if he's slightly uh, slower, he just keeps him on his shoulder, and keeps him off the ball. So it helps us retain possession as well. And like we say, he's he's, he's got a good pass on him. He's got a couple of assists. He's getting in the goals now. It's just it's it's. It's an absolute wonder to have a player with that kind of ability who can play pretty much, you know, a centre back, left back, and and still be because I think he's got more offensive threat in him than Callum Elder does. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's he's meant yeah. to be a centre back. He's he's I just think he's been absolutely phenomenal. And I think maybe having the captain's armband on while Coyle hasn't been starting maybe has helped him sort of shift up a couple of gears too, trying to you know lead by example kind of thing. 
I think yeah. what it says, it says that he's a very intelligent footballer. And it's, and it's not he's not just a centre half, like he's a very good footballer. And it, mm. and for somebody who can take a position and just say, you know what, I'm gonna take it by the scruff of the neck and I'm gonna make it my own, like I've not seen one of our any of our centre halves be moved to left back and look like even more of a threat, as you say, Ant, than we already had at left back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, thoroughly impressed with that, his intelligence and his and his willingness to improve and, and you know, contribute as well. I mean, goals defensively, he, he's been fantastic. Um, he has been since, since he's been sort of part of the first team. Um, but I think he's shown a lot of maturity this season. And I think that under Rossinia, he's really, he embodies what um, Rossinia is looking for in that intelligence, somebody willing to adapt to new styles and new positions. And I'm absolutely chuffed for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he'll be in the Premier League one day, won't he? Hopefully with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully with us. Yeah, if not, he'll be good. our next big money move, will he? Um, mm-hmm. I agree. Because I, you just got to look at, if for me, left-footed centre-backs are such gold dust anyway. And then yeah. you're looking at a, a young English uh, centre-back who can play mm-hmm. full-back and he's comfortable with the ball at his feet, got a good range of passing. He's fast, he's strong, he's got goals in his game. Mm-hmm. You know, Premier League scouts right now will be taking these notes back to, you know, whoever's scouting him which he undoubtedly will be getting scouted for the last probably 100%. two years of his career. Um, they'll be saying, look, this guy's this guy's good. We need to keep an eye on him. And they, I, this this is why I think we need to reach those heights, uh, you know, where we're challenging in the top half of the table. Oh, yeah. you've, got, you've got that pulling power to keep him then. Whereas I think Greaves is a bit different to KLP, though. I think he might want to stay here all the time. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that he wants to stay here all the time. <laughs> oh, um, well done, mate. <laughs> Get that, yeah. get get that, All get right, that mate. legacy in. Get that legacy mm-hmm. in. Well, we've got him on a four-year deal, haven't we? With the option of a we fifth, do. which yeah. I know contracts mean nothing nowadays, but it does increase the value and the amount of money that somebody's got to pay for him. So, mm-hmm. even if you don't stay, we're going to get a, a hefty whack for him, aren't we? So, uh, yeah. probably a record sum. I mean, you know, you're talking more, definitely more than uh, Maguire. So, mm. yeah, quite possibly. So, yeah, um, him at left back, I think, has been a. A really good move. So let's move on to the transfer window because, of course, it's the 3rd of January as we're recording this. A um, few more days until the Fulham match where we might see not to one but to two new City players. Um, we've got Malcolm Ebueye, um and Aaron Connolly. So that's from on loan from Crystal Palace. He's a winger. And then Connolly's a striker from Brighton who's uh, 22. Um, start with, um, I'll just call him Malcolm. Uh, I've heard only good things about him had a, a pretty good first season under well under assistant manager being senior last year at derby and um, so there's the connection there um you know he's a winger he, he only had a few goals and assists but looking at um crystal palace fans and what they've seen of him in the academy only good things about him you know and cynics not really taken to this uh system and a lot of the other wingers aren't playing or injured so having another winger probably a good idea and Rosinia said that he should fit the system so are we excited about this signing? I am just on the pure basis that it's somebody that Liam Rosinia really wants to add to his team this room has been around for since November or something oh wow yeah. Uh, yeah so it's it's it, it... <sighs> To me, if 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 he really wants him in the team, it means you know he knows his strengths, his weaknesses. He knows he can fit him into the system. And like we said, we, we've struggled with wingers so far this season. Um, it, it, I I I can't say I remember watching a lot of him. Um, I, I know he came on against us as a sub in the the game that that Derby beat us at their ground, but I, I can't remember him coming on. But they all say positive things about him. Derby, uh, like you say, all the Palace fans have said good stuff about him, and it's. It's just, it's, it, I hope it's not another one of those youngsters like Salah lad who, who ends up getting injured and we just Immediately. You know, hear, hear all this rave about him and then actually never see him play. Uh, so mm-hmm. hopefully, because um, I expect Cynic to leave, um, I, I think that he's going to be the replacement for him. But mm-hmm. um, he's young, he's exciting and he's fast. So, you know, if, if we're going to play the kind of system that we're playing, he fits the build, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen his, said he's happy to have fast wingers. Um, you know, with uh, Ali being fit. So uh, I think, yeah, this guy, if he's quick, then that'll fit the system. And Matt, uh, any thoughts on him? No, I agree. I, I said on the last time I was on the podcast that we're crying out for a winger that's not necessarily going to score a hat full of goals, but he's just going to play a way that's going to cause defenders nightmares. 
He's really he's great on the ball. Um, kid's 19, um, so naturally you, you, he's going to be hit and miss. Um, I, I do think that I, I trust in the philosophy we're playing is that we're not going to be part of relegation battle. If we mm. were, say, 22nd and we brought this kid in, I'd be a bit like, oh, flipping it. We just need somebody that's going to you know, tie the team together. But I think he's worth yeah. the risk. He's a lone move. Um, he's obviously well sought after. Um, and as you say, Ant, you make a good point. Like he, Rossini wants characters in his team. He wants players that he trusts. He wants players that he knows. And ultimately, he wants to make his own team. And if he's worked with him at Derby and likes what he's about, when he was 18, you know, still a bit of, he's had a bit of development since then. You know, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more than happy with it. Um, and, and I think he had something different. He, he had, he has that genuine pace and, and dribbling ability that I don't think our team really possess that player who's just going to, like that low centre of gravity player that's just going to, you know, take players on. I don't think we've got one of them really, apart from say Admanesh when he's fit. So yeah, very happy to, to hopefully bring him in. But I mean, obviously with the stuff, that, um, it's not necessarily going to happen. There's um, a lot of fans from other clubs saying, oh, he's going to join us. Mm. I think if you're a 19 year old kid, and somebody says to you, right, you can either move to QPR, who are apparently after him, or Hull. Close by. QPR just down the road, or Hull, you know, other side of the of the country, you know, away from family, away from friends. You know, that's a decision that he's going to have to make. Um, but I think that if he's worked with Rossini before, that could obviously work in our favour. So let's see what the kid wants to do. And hopefully he joins us. And if he does, then I wish him all the best. And fingers crossed we can get the best out of him. Because he's certainly an exciting player. Whether he'll hit the heights of his actual potential at City, I don't. Th- obviously not, because he's only 19. But look, if we can get, if we can get, say, five or six goals out of him, a few assists. I want a Harry Wilson, basically. I want somebody to come yeah. in and light make up an our season and make an impact. Exactly. So, and if he can do that, brilliant. So, yeah, hopefully he comes and, and joins mm-hmm. the best team yeah. in the world. Well, I think Rossini has said that he's turned down other clubs to join us. I mean, who knows whether the other rumours are, uh, you know, just paper talk or not. But uh, I would imagine, yeah, um, the the draw of having worked with Rossini before will definitely help. And I think that's what uh, is the case with the other player that Tan Kessler mentioned on uh, radio before the Wigan game, Aaron Connolly. So he's he's a striker, but I think can play at left wing or right wing as well. Um, has, has had a, a pretty bad 2022 uh, Middlesbrough fans have been very critical of him. He was on loan there from January last season and then um, has been, he played five games for Venezia in Italy in the uh, second division, then got injured. So uh, pretty much the worst 2022 he could have had. Um, but Rossini worked with him at the Brighton Academy when he was, uh, was he a player and a, a manager or a you know, academy manager, manager there. So again, I think the main thing about these signings is that they're players that Rossini knows and trusts. And, you know, at the moment, this is not his squad at all. That will make it, you know, have a few more faces he knows that he can trust and, and work within the system he wants to play, which is a bit different. So, uh, but not heard good things about him. So, and are you going to be less happy with this one? Well, you see, the thing is, is that we were obviously we we were, we all spoke about this transfer in the chat before this episode, and you see, the thing is, is is usually when there's rumours about one player leaving a club and joining another, and not only the club that he's currently at, all the other clubs that have had him as well, are, mm. are, are pretty much poking fun at it, and you know, yeah. saying that it's not a very good transfer. More often than not, it tends not to be. Um, the the problem with Connolly is, is he's, he's he's not scored many goals. From, from what it looks like. And I, I think I seem to remember him breaking through into the Brighton first team in the Premier League and scoring against Tottenham. I think I think that's... Two goals against Tottenham. Yeah, and, and, and considering he scored seven in his career and the <laughs> two of those were in that game, you know, he's, it's, he's, he's obviously struggled to find that con- consistent goal-scoring form. But he's a Republic of Ireland international. I know they're not the, 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 the greatest of national teams, but, you know, you, he's, he's still classed as one of the best forwards that they can pick from, obviously, because he's playing for them. Played for him eight times. He's still only young. Um, it's it's a transfer that we've got to trust Rosinia and into it. If if he wants him and he genuinely believes that he can bring him in and get the best out of him, then then that's the way we're going to have to deal with it. If he comes in and he's you know a bad egg and he's he's bad for the team, I'm pretty sure that Rosinia will drop him. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's 
you just don't want it to be a Marcus Madison type transfer, do we? Um, it's, you know, some of the rumours about his, his antics off pitch as well is quite a problem. But like we say, at some point in his career, he's got to, he's got to look at his career and go, I've got to sort myself out. I've got to knuckle down and, you know, he, he might come here and score 10, 15 goals till the end of the season and, and ignites his career. And, you know, that's that spark he needs. But it, I wasn't too thr- thrilled about seeing it, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, to see how it works out. If, if Rosini really wants to bring him in, then, then let's give him a chance and see what he can do. Mm-hmm. There, I think 15 no goals might be asking a little much, but uh, go on, Matt. No, I, yeah, I think. Well, if he does that, then yeah, <laughs> brilliant. I wouldn't there's mind no risk that. In, wouldn't mind that at all. Wouldn't mind that at all. But there's no, there's no risk with bringing him in. I think the thing for me is that, like, hopefully, if Oscar stays fit, then he'll start. And if not, then Longman will play up front. I don't think it's an absolute disaster. Um, so why not bring him in? I think that the key point I take from him is that. He feels like one of them, one of them players. that's just an annoying player. Does never seems to play with a smile on his face. Always a bit moody, right? Mm. If you if you look at a player's development, like Rossini, like, he said in the interview after the game, he said he liked his his temperament, and he would have been well. He's twenty two now, so he would have been like eighteen, nineteen. If Rossini is not a daft guy, like he's he's not going to bring somebody in that, that he thinks is going to sort of ruin the the chemistry of the group. Mm. You and like, and like I say, if if he if he starts to, then he just won't play, and then see you later. Thanks for the sort of five months of service. You know, that's where there's no risk involved. So, you know what? Yeah, I completely agree with Ant's point. I've got to believe in what Rosinia says. We we want him to have this team. He's got his own philosophy without his players that he would maybe like. So, again, we're not spending money. We've got two loan moves. Um, young players, like I say, they've got they've got great potential. You know, twenty two and nineteen. Let's see what they do. The core players will remain in that side. We've still got some good quality in there. So if we can get the most out of those two players, particularly Connolly, who is an out and out striker. I know he's you know, he's played out wide, but I think he is, you know, he is a he is a striker. He's gonna be back up to Oscar, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. He's gonna be back up to Oscar because I think with 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 Longman, it's kind of like and and again Longman and um and what's his face? Connolly played in the same academy team at Brighton. So mm-hmm. yeah. um, there's 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 good things for him at City. His old coach when he was when he was growing up, and one of his close mates from his old club. I think he's gone away. He's maybe gone to Middlesbrough, very far away from home, not done much. He's gone to Luton, where he didn't really play too many games. I think you know, like two games. I think he was injured, and then he's gone away to wherever the hell Venezia is. So Venice, you know, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's a decent place to be, but, you know, he's away from a lot of things. So if he can have those sort of things to keep him, keep his head and to make him feel comfortable, that means he scores goals for City. Bring him on. Yeah. I am just going to check where Venezia is because, of course, if he's swapping Venice for Hull, that's probably not the best move for him. Why well, would you not? I don't, think on the bridge. I, don't think, I don't think it's his choice, really, is it? He's, he's not, is he currently at Venice, v- Venezia or... Um, it is in well, Venice. He, yeah. It's in so Venice, um, B. He, he's on loan from from Brighton, but um, that move is he's still there, but they'll have to stop that loan because he, he's injured, and I don't think they really want him. Hey, so, Seri chose cool Hull over Italy as well. We've obviously got a bit of pull power. Well, we've just got the deep. Yeah. We've got the deep and the Street Life Museum and mm. loads of roadworks. Yeah. We, yeah. It, I think. I think you make a good point, though. In, in just in terms of what we we do actually offer him, not just like the the comfortability and all stuff, but like an owner that actually wants to do well and is going to put money in and is going to like he could he could make his career at City. Like his agent will be going to him. You could go there, score ten goals in a season. They sign you for six million pound. You get then thirty grand a week because or however much he gets. Like. It's it's a w- it's a win for him if he was to join us and do that. Yes, you have to sacrifice Venice, but I think transfer wise, I think it's the thing is with Adjin, he's such because because of his career and the way that he's made his money and and what he does mm-hmm. and is his natural his, his confidence and his charisma. I think in terms of like competing against other clubs to sign players now, we're actually in the mix. Whereas if yeah. you think, oh, yeah. if you actually, you know, go back under the alarms, can you imagine Ehab trying to convince someone to sign for us instead of QPR, for example? Like, no but, chance. Where, where is that? Gene, you, you know, 
you got Ehab who's, who's saying, meet me in this reception thing, and then probably making them pay for the bill and leaving. Where you've got now Adjins probably taking them on a private jet and flying them around the UK and, and, and then giving them a man-to-man tour of all and saying, this is why I love this city and all that kind of stuff. And he, he will genuinely sell the club and the city to these players. And hmm. yes, okay, we're probably a bit financially more savvy now. Well, not savvy, but a bit stronger financially now. So we can offer him a bit more too. But when we're now in the in the mix competing for players, when it says, you know, Hull, Middlesbrough, QPR, etc., or after this player, you can look at that now and go, we can still sign him. Whereas last season, you couldn't say that. No, mm. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally agree. Mm. It, I think I probably like, only... even... Go on. Go on, hang on, mate. <laughs> no, go on, Matt. <laughs> no, I, I, I just want to Thank make you. a point that he did that with Woods. When, when he came, like he came from Birmingham, he like took him out. You saw, you saw all the photos, you then saw him like sat next to him at the game. Like he looks like he cares about every one of them players. Like he really does care. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, we, we see that with the, with the fan stuff and the travel. We see that with the community things that he's doing. Like he, he really does care about this football club. And I think that, and you're exactly right. We, we do have the pulling power and it's down to Ajahn. Um, and hopefully, it's that this is just a start in terms of what he uh, he can do for this club. But it's it's certainly been a great start because look, so so, so can, compared to the Alams, it's it's chalk and cheese, lads. And mm. we're very fortunate to have somebody actually does care about this club. Absolutely. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is something stupid. I've only got room in my heart for one Brighton Loney turned uh, <laughs> City player. Uh, so I don't know whether Connolly will really work, but, um, you know, yeah. So let, let's look at some of the players that might be leaving in January. Um, we mentioned Smith might go out on loan. And um, one thing to mention there, maybe he we need to keep him just so Regan's got a friend, um, you know, want to keep him happy. Uh, but then I think some of the, the Chelsea loanees, um, Simons and Vale, um, I know Barry Cooper said that uh, Simons, he, he thinks he might stay. Because um, he's a midfielder, but Vale bringing in two players that can play on the wing, he'll certainly be gone. And he's hardly played Baxter. Maybe we could think about, you know, getting a, another goalkeeper who's actually going to be, you know, fit for the next few months. Because there's only was it five months left of the season. Baxter's well, injured for three of them. Tyler, we? We've got yeah. loads of Tyler, and we've got Cartwright out on loan at, at Peterborough, so he probably wouldn't look for another keeper. Because yeah. I'd actually be surprised if 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 not all three of the Chelsea players went back. I think mm-hmm. Baxter was was intended to be the number one, but he's just had a, a, a torrid time with injuries, hasn't he? And if he's going to be out for the next three months, then he might as well be back yeah. at Chelsea, hasn't he? Because, do you know what I mean? We can still go back for him in summer. I'd like us to go back for him in summer. I do think he's better with the ball at his feet than Ingram is, but, mm. you know, we've, Ingram signed a new contract before this season. So, um, yeah. you know, realistically, when it comes to summer and they're, they're, they're you know, reevaluating what they need, they probably wouldn't go back in for Baxter. It might just be one of those cases. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, we quite possibly. Go back in for Baxter and... No, 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 no. I, I, no, see, the thing is with Ingram and Baxter is um, if I had the choice, if they're both fully fit, I'm putting Baxter in the team just for the pure sense that I think at the, with his ball, uh, with the ball at his feet, um, he's just much more comfortable. He suits the system more than Ingram does. Ingram's mm-hmm. a very good, very good goalkeeper. But I just think that when he's pressed a bit, Ingram, he, he sort of he, he panics and just sort of spoofs it a bit. And um, it's, it's it's those little things and tweaks in systems and, and, and what players suit. But it, it's one of those, it's such fine margins that between Ingram and Baxter, if you'd said, we're going to sell Ingram tomorrow and sign Baxter and if you're fully fit and play him, I wouldn't be bothered in either way. Do you know what I mean? They're both good goalkeepers. It's a very, very strange <laughs> circumstance to have two great keepers just as good as each other. So, but so yeah. I would say the exact same. I would say that I would prefer Baxter over Ingram. But if Baxter goes in the summer, I wouldn't then think, oh, we need to. When he goes back to Chelsea, I wouldn't then think, oh, we should sign him back on a permanent mm. deal. I would then yeah. I would make the point that you know he's had his time, he's had good success. He may be better with his feet than Ingram, but like he, for me, it's like. Ingram's here, Baxter's there. We want somebody who's like there to like really fit the system that we want to play. And I think there's better there's better goalkeepers yeah. out there uh, that can. I think it was more just because it. obviously when we signed Baxter on loan, that was with the option to buy in summer, which when announced we were all very happy about. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, obviously point, we, we don't know that. we don't know if that clause is still active if they have to recall him or we have to send him back, etc. But I would imagine that because he's been here for the last two years. 
that even if that clause was, um, you know, null because he'd, he'd gone back, Chelsea would say to us, look, if, if we'll give you first dibs if you want him, do you want him or not kind of thing. Brazilian yeah. might well turn around and say, actually, now nah, I'm all right, thank you. But um, just because that clause is in there, I do think we would still go for him in summer, especially if he stays um, and we don't send him back. But if he has to go back to Chelsea... I'm not sure. But like we say, I mean, we've got, we don't know what this Lota Tile is like. You know, he's a France mm-hmm. under 21 keeper, so he's obviously got something about him. Um, you know, I'd like to see him play against Fulham. I'd like to see him get a chance, see what he can offer. You know, he, he might be the, the 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 competition that Ingram needs next season. Mm-hmm. He, he might be even better with the ball at his feet. He might be like Edison. Uh, you know, we, we need to see what he can offer, kind of thing. So the optimism's great, and I love mm-hmm. that. Mate. I've, I've, I've got optimism for. The, I, I'm 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 usually very pessimistic, so the fact that I've got optimism, enjoy it because it's here. Yeah, that, that's how well it. we're doing. I'm liking it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully our optimism stays um, after the FA Cup game because I think it's going to be a very tough one. Um, in my notes, I've got Fulham uh, <clears throat> eighth in the Premier League. I think they're they're winning at the moment, so it's seventh. But they're obviously a very good team, likely to change a lot of their players, to give some of their you know, finished players a chance in the FA Cup. But again, if they're having a good season, they're definitely going to stay up. Maybe they will play a strong team um, because they want to have a bit of a cup run as well. But uh, I mean, less about how we see this game going, but how how important is the FA Cup to a senior really? Um, how do we think he's going to approach it? Because I think playing low to Tala, that sort of thing trying some players out to see if they fit the system in a lesser important game could be a, a benefit. See, for me, I think we... Would not, I, don't, I don't think the fan base would be too bothered about the FA Cup game, but I think Rosinia probably will be wanting to experiment with different players. Yeah, he will want on. to see maybe fine what on. the Tatala can offer. What, you know, has Figs regained his confidence? Can he play out from the back? Can he work in the system now? He's, 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 you know, come out the spotlight for a bit and been in training a lot. You know, he's, he's going to want to have this as an opportunity to just say, right, prove to yourself, pro- well, prove to me that that you're worth a starting spot. Dislodge this person. You know what I mean? You've got Longman, who's, who's pretty much starting every game at the minute. Randell Williams might be on his way out. Can he put a performance in that changes Rosini's mind? Hmm. Probably not, but he's going to have the chance to do so. And I think that's why... As, as as annoying as these cup games are, especially when you're in good form, I think they're they're more of a distraction, aren't they? But um, it's 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 just the perfect opportunity for Zinia to go. Right, come on then, squad players, get yourselves in there. Let's see what you can all do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a bit similar to the cup game last season against Everton. We're we're not really expecting anything out of the game, but it'll be a good Jeez. opportunity to see you know how how we do against um, a better team. It's a good test for Zinia to test his system out and work some things out i think changing some of the team up would be good but you still want a, a strong team because you want to you know you know push yourself against a good side but uh you know fulham are a very good team they're better than everton were last year at uh, the top half everton were of course struggling to stay up until the very end of the season but uh one little fact i want you to guess um can you give me the year the last time hull in the fa cup not the league cup because we're we're better in the League Cup, apparently, looking at the statistics. Um, beat a team who were above them um, or in a higher division than them in the FA Cup. And uh, I gave you a clue before the, the game. Uh, it was a long time ago. <laughs> was it... I, I want to say, like, mid-2000s, and I want to say something like Borough. Hmm. Because they were no. in the Premier League around that time, brilliant. Well, I don't think I don't think we've played Middlesbrough in the FA Cup. No, I remember us. I, I remember us playing. Um, I remember us playing Aston Villa. Um, mm-hmm. I think it was Aston Villa when uh, was it Peter Taylor? I'm sure it was our first championship season. Mm. Um, I think I think we lost that game one 0 So I, I I don't think I think it was about the nineteen. <sighs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do yeah, yeah nineteen. 19- 78, I'm going to go that far back. Oh, it's not quite that far back. Um, no, I think I haven't been able to check all the years, but um, unless Salisbury or uh, Hayes um, <laughs> or, or, or Norwich, Northwich, some, some team I've never heard of, unless they were somehow in uh, League One when we were in League Two, um, it was 1999 in December. So 24 and a bit years ago against Luton Town. Who were in League One, or the they were in the second division, we were in the third division. 
So it's been a very long time. And I think, you know, of course, there's not many years before that, that was still a Premier League. Maybe we've never beaten a Premier League team in the FA Cup uh, when we've been not a Premier League team. So uh, certainly a while ago, we've done better in the League Cup, but that's 24 years of, of hurt um really for, for city in the fa cup so uh hopefully you know that's a bit of history that they've got to play for i don't think they'll be thinking that before the game but that is one thing to think about that you know it is a very difficult thing to do clearly um so you know hopefully there's an upset but h- how do we see this game going because i think fulham are a very good solid team of course it's the return of marco silva again um do you give us any chance of, of pulling off an up, an upset? Um, I think we're winning the FA Cup. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to win every game. Cool. I think. I think to be uh, to be honest, God, it is an I optimistic podcast. Point, this one. Yeah. Oh, we love them Tigers. I think everything that you said said Ant, about this game, I, I totally agree with. Totally agree with. It's a game that we just need to flip in. Heck, Brighton are four 0 up against Everton. They've just conceded. Everton just conceded uh, six go- uh, three goals in six minutes. Sorry, but I just thought I mentioned that. <laughs> it. Wow. Lampard's in the mud. Um, I think um, there was a comment made earlier about, you know, if we do win, we might gain that confidence to win at home. You know, yeah, always the way. Um, 4-0, flipping eight. Always the way. Um, you know, if you do get a win against the top side, it's going to instill confidence in your squad. I think, you know, if we, if we manage to pull it off, then absolutely phenomenal. I don't think we will. Fulham are, Fulham are quality. That they've they've been excellent. Mitrovic is an absolute. If if he doesn't play, then it's a diff, then it's kind of slightly different. But across the across the park, they've been absolutely excellent. So yeah, I don't see us getting anything from this game. I think that it'll be doesn't matter what's happened in the past for seniors um, history of the Fulham hours. I, for me, it's just about the quality of the two sides. Um, I think we'll rotate. I think they'll rotate, and even with even if we had our strongest squad against their rotated squad, I think we'd still struggle. So mm-hmm. look. If we get a win, you know, I'll be running down the street. But um, if not, then, you know, I'm not going to start crying. Yeah, same. It's, uh, you know. It's a, it's a free hit. I think exactly. the thing is with, with, with cup games like this, it's literally a win-win, even if you lose. Because exactly. if you win, it, like we say, it, 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 even in your squad players, they're getting they're joining that winning momentum that we're currently on. But if we lose, it's a cup game. And it won't really our starting eleven. So the, the players that come back into the fold for the Uddersfield game, you know, weren't really on the pitch for that loss. So they, they, they haven't got that, you know, they had lost that momentum per se. So it, it's, it's, it's literally a free hit. Um, I, it's, I don't know how strong a team he'll play. Rosinia might be quite, he might fancy a cup and you never know. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I do think... Maybe Agin would. Yeah, Agin probably would. I think he That's will. His, that, that, would. He'd love that. He'd love yeah. that cup run storyline. FA Cup, yeah. FA Cup final is is Ajahn's bread and butter. He would ab- he would milk that day for all it's worth. He would, he would. He'd, 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 You wouldn't even be able to watch the game because he'd be on the camera. Uh, he loves it. Well, we'd be able to sign so many Fenerbahce players if we got to <laughs> um, you know, got to the FA Cup final, and got into Europe again. We'd be signing all of them, all the Fenerbahce rejects. Um, yeah, so. Hey, it was um, T- Tan Kessler was asked on uh, Radio Umberside about obviously um, whether or not they were going to be re- trying to recruit abroad or mm. more domestic this this time. And Kessler said something that was quite interesting that said that uh, Rosinia sort of provided him with his, his his report, like from the game and stuff, uh, well, from the squad, from what he's seen throughout mm-hmm. the time he's been here. And uh, mentioned something about the fact that you know players from abroad that aren't used to the the, the scheduling of the championship, the the physicality of it, um, everything like that. That this is why we've got so many injuries because we've gone for players that um, you know were were, were in international leagues uh, and couldn't cope with the physicality either of the training or the, the mm-hmm. concession of games, and and that's why we've got so many injuries. So I think this window will probably be a largely domestic recruit window, which we Absolutely. can see already. Like we say, Ebioe and yeah. uh, Connolly coming in there, they're in the English leagues. So, um, you know, it's uh, like we say, when, when I was asked at the be- beginning of the season about like transfer activity, we love signing 17, 18 players. That's absolutely brilliant. Every fan wants to see that. Um, but it needs to be smart. And I think mm-hmm. over the course of Ajahn's tenure now, we are seeing him learn. Like we, we, we do something and then it's like, Mm, yeah, maybe we'd do it a different way next time. And and that's what you want to see, that progression, that learning, that, you know, take accountability for, yeah, okay, well, maybe we did that 
a bit too hasty. We'll do it more sensible this time round. And this is why I think the optimism's higher because we are, you can tell the club itself is moving forward, not just the players on the pitch winning games, fans, ownership, everything. It's all going together, isn't it? It just seems to be uh, clicking. He's, mm-hmm. he's just chucked it all at the window and seen what's stuck, right? And mm. you could say that, you know, Oscar's worked, but maybe Tufan hasn't particularly worked. You could mm. say that Saad Manesh has worked, but then you could say that Cynic hasn't worked. Mm. You know, there's, there's a lot. There's, yeah, there's, there's uh, yeah, you know, Seri's Seri's worked perfectly, but then, you know, has um, has the two Chelsea Pelcas. Um, Pelcas, you know, it, it's, it, it has been like that. Just see what sticks. And, and ultimately, like, I think, and again, I think I agree with you in that there's going to be a level of um, a learning curve for Ajahn, who's his, is his first football club that he's owned. He's, you know, he's come in, guns blazing, changed everything, you know, wanted to get the fans involved, brought in loads of these signings. You know, can you can you win can you win titles with that? Probably not. But I think that by signing those players, he got fans back and he got us believing that he's actually got the optimism to go and do it. It's now at the point where, as you say, we want to make sure that they're senior signings, they're smart signings, and ultimately, hopefully, successful signings. Absolutely well said. Well, I mean, it's certainly going to be an interesting 2023 with Adjun um, and Vicenia, uh, hopefully a better one. I think we, we were 13th in the championship overall for the whole of 2022, but I think that's only is 18 teams that were in it for the whole year. Um, so 13th out of 18th isn't actually that good. So um, hopefully we're competing at the higher end. And I think with the, uh, you know, some of those domestic signings and, you know, seeing the best of Seri and the senior sort of consistent possession-based football, I think it should be a better year. Um, lastly, what what are our quick predictions for the Fulham game? Because I might go another entertaining game like like Everton, maybe a, a 2-1 defeat, but hopefully we, we push them quite close. Uh, Matt, what about you for the FA Cup? Um, three one loss. Um, they get they get three, and we get a consolation. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter. We're winning the league. Doesn't Come matter, on. lads. Man, you said we're winning the FA Cup, so you've gone back on that pretty quickly. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just in, I'm in absolute euphoria now that we've won two games on the row. I, I mm-hmm. some a lot of the stuff I probably said tonight has been delusional, but I don't care because we're winning oh, games. Yeah. It's not only two wins in a row. It's it's Rosinia said treat uh, the 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 league coming back after the World Cup break as the start of a new season and since that point we've not lost no yeah it's a good point um, he'll say that one, lost... though, won't he? he'll say that though. of yeah, course yeah. he will yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. All the games we we've lost. only lost once the under, we've, lost. we've only lost once under Rosinia and before yeah, the true. before the last two games it was a, co- a case of we'd only lost once but we'd only won once we just kept drawing games but I saw the positive in that is we're not losing them under Shotter yeah. those draws are losses yeah. And the win's probably a draw. Do you know what I mean? So points wise, we're, we're far better off than where we would have been. And now that we've got those two wins in the bag, his record as a city manager at the minute is looking very good. Um, and Huddersfield next at home, which we really, really need to win just for my sanity. But in in terms of league standings, like um, it's it's another winnable game, and hopefully a game that that turns a home form around for us, and we can then go into Sheffield United away safely in mid table. You mm-hmm. know. And get Give them a go away from home, where we've not lost in seven games. Five wins in seven away, yeah, including draws. Good. And then the two games that we drew were Millwall and Watford. Clean sheets, nil nil. So, so against Fulham on the basis of that, two nil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good stuff! Great stuff. Yeah, we'll lose, we'll lose two nil. It'll bring it. We'll, we'll, it'll be one nil, and we'll be pushing in the the further stages of the game. And then he'll bring like uh, Mitrovic on for the last five minutes, and he'll score an header or something. Quite possibly, quite yeah. possibly. Well, I mean, if if we lose that, then we can say we're unbeaten the league since the World yeah. Cup. Yeah, uh, and we, we so, don't count the game, unless we win. CV, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, yeah, good. Uh, seven points out of nine. Hopefully, a few transfers in and a positive result in the FA Cup, and we can look forward to the league returning. So thanks again, Matt and Ant. You've been wonderful as usual. And thanks to everyone who's listened and commented, and we'll see you again very soon, and uh, should be getting a Fulham preview out soon as well to uh, discuss with a Fulham fan to discuss the game at the weekend. So thanks again. Happy New Year, and we'll see you all again very soon.